returning to glory in the mid-70s, the Celtics would once again begin to decline. Mainstays departed. Some were traded. Others said goodbye to the game forever. And even the strong-willed Dave Cowens lost his desire to play. He would briefly leave the team in the 77 season. He just didn't feel like uh, we had the old Celtics, uh, the old Celtic spirit, the old Celtic tradition. So he just wanted to get away for a while. And the changes showed on the court. The perfect Celtics were leaving while the wrong ones were coming in. New additions Sidney Wicks and Curtis Rowe were the opposite of all the team had stood for. You know, Wicks and Rowe came to symbolize this terrible time in Boston sports. You know, selfish ball players who wanted the rock, wanted touches, weren't worried about winning. Uh, I think one of them had the quote, the W's and L's don't show up in my paycheck. The downward spiral continued when the team's ownership dealt three first round draft picks for Bob McAdoo. They had an ownership situation where John Y. Brown bought the team and traded away all the future that Red Auerbach had carefully managed to acquire in trades. As he watched what he had built being torn apart, the Celtics patriarch was even ready to do the unthinkable. Red was on his way to the airport to accept the job with the Knicks, and you had no hope for this team. But hope was renewed when Brown sold the team and Red agreed to stay on. In the past, he had boldly pursued players who would be ideal Celtics. And now he had identified a new savior. In 1978, Red drafted Indiana State junior Larry Bird, even though Bird had decided to stay in school for his senior year. It was odd that they drafted a player that they couldn't have right away. And it was more frustration for the fans to have to wait a year. And there were many who wondered whether Bird would be worth the wait. White guy, Indiana State, can't jump can't run. He was not fast, he was not quick. I was Larry Bird's biggest skeptic. But in his senior year, Bird began to convince the doubters. He would single-handedly lead the unknown Sycamores to the NCAA Finals. It's destiny for these guys. Once people saw him play, there were no doubts. We were watching Indiana State games here in Boston. Local TV made sure that they got their games because the Celtics were so bad. And he began to embody and represent hope. Finally, Red's vision would become reality when Bird became a Celtic. Everything's starting to fall into place. I hope you all realize this. We got Larry, one or two little moves, and we're ready to go. First game, I just remember so vividly the announcer Larry Bird's name and somebody from one of the top tiers threw out a, uh, a, a dove and it flew around the building. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. Yes, it flew across the garden and the place erupted. That was unbelievable. This was the really uh, the unleashing of Larry Bird. And Bird would pay immediate oh, dividends. Celtics have got three seconds, two, Bird, a runner, it's good! Yes, indeed! No one was questioning Red's move any longer. In Larry Bird, he had found all the qualities of Celtic greatness, embodied in one player, a player who combined talent with tenacity. He dive on the floor, he, he do whatever it takes. He was the most self-motivated player I ever saw. Bird had revitalized not only the franchise, but also its fans. They're hot, they're selling out, they're winning, and it really feels like the old days now. And for Red, this is a crowning achievement. You know, he's got his kind of team back again now. But Red wasn't through. With one move, he would pull off one of the biggest steals ever in the NBA, acquiring center Robert Parrish and rookie forward Kevin McHale. The Celtics now had the right pieces and just the right player to utilize them. Larry's going to slow it up. I liked it when, when everybody was involved. You know, whether I scored 10 points or 20 points or 50 points, I liked it when the ball was moving. Guys would say, well, how are we going to stop Larry Bird? See, that's what Larry Bird wanted you to feel. Okay, the focus would be on him, and he would get other people, his teammates, into the game. Everybody stopped 